Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another RC edition video. Today, I'm going to be fixing this battery. It's a 6 cell nickel metal hydride Tenergy 5000 milliamp. And I'm going to fix this one because I have another one that matches it. And that'll be for my Emacs. So I got a broken ground wire right here. And if you can look in there, it's kind of hard to see, but the wire is all like green and corroded. So I'm guessing it got, oh, there's a better view of it. I'm guessing it got water in there somehow and just like rotted off. So I ordered some heat shrink from Amazon, which is the only part I was missing. This stuff looks huge. Let me uh, measure it for you. So if you need to get some, you can get the right size. I don't remember offhand what this is, but I'll measure it with the calipers. Zero it. And then, just in case you guys need to get some of this to do some batteries. And this would also work for a 7-cell hump pack, like if you had another battery right here, which I do have. So anyway, this measures... Just call it 3.75 inches, so 3 and 3 quarter inch is what this measures across if you need to get some of this to do a similar project. So, throw this aside for now. And if you need the metric equivalent of that, um, just Google it. <clears throat> so, where's my good razor knife? That one obviously is not going to do. Hang on a second, got to find my good razor knife. There we are, has an actual blade. First thing I'm going to do is throw caution to the wind and just slice this open. Cut the old heat shrink off. And I'm going to save these end caps these plastic end caps, so I'm going to be careful not to cut those. Just going to kind of score the heat shrink on top. And take those off, and I'll save those for when I reheat shrink this after I put new wires on. Same thing with the front. And that wire is shot right at the battery, right there. So I'm just going to unsolder that and put new wire on it. And I'm going to have to take this XD60 off as well and just go back with all new wire. I've had a cold for like a month that's not getting any better, so you'll have to excuse my voice. Go ahead and arc that out a little bit. Alright, going to get rid of that. And there's a second layer of heat shrink on here, which actually will make it really nice for reassembling so the batteries aren't all falling all loose. So I'm just going to leave that as is. So I've had the, hot, uh, the uh, soldering iron heating up for about 10 minutes, which is about how long mine takes to get up to temperature to do bigger jobs like this. Go ahead and slice that off. And then, man, that is some tough stuff. I'm going to unsolder these wires. That's a lot of solder. It's going to take a minute to get that heated up. All right, guys, so off camera there, I actually got a little bit carried away. I ended up putting this in a vise and using a nail and a torch to melt those big solder joints on there because my uh, soldering iron isn't powerful enough. And then I soldered these two wires on there, re -tend, or I mean tend the wires, soldered them on there, and honestly forgot I was making a video for a couple minutes. So now I'm back and I'm going to shrink wrap the battery now that I've remembered I was making a video. So the shrink wrap length is going to shrink a little bit as well as the diameter. So I'm just going to lay this out on here and just cut it about three-eighths of an inch longer than I actually need it to be. Let me zoom out a little bit. It's so difficult doing this stuff behind the camera. So right about there is where I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to put my sleeves back on like they were to begin with to protect the ends of the batteries and then I'm going to mark which one's positive on this 
just so I make sure I don't get them mixed up when I'm going to solder the new connector on. And how I'm going to do that is just look on here, there's the positive side, and just mark that with a red piece of tape. So there's no getting it mixed up when I resolder the connections. Get those through there without, ar without arcing them together. This is a lot more critical if you're doing this on a LiPo battery. You definitely never want to arc them, but I'm not a real safe person anyway, so I generally just throw caution to the wind and uh, do things fast while trying to maintain some level of quality. So I'm going to open up the heat shrink. This stuff is, is pretty cool. I've never worked with heat shrink that's quite so... Uh, responsive as this. I mean you get heat near it and it just like goes to town. It shrinks right up and it shrinks more than you would think also. Okay so I've got it in there about centered and I'm going to get an old hair dryer and fire that up and just start slowly shrinking it with that rather than putting a bunch of heat to it at the same time and getting uneven shrinkage. Okay guys, just going to turn on the uh, hair dryer now on the low setting and just kind of go over this. Yeah, that came out pretty nice. The only parts that could have came out a little better were around the caps here. It kind of pulled too much right there. I should have heated up a little bit more here. But overall, yeah, that's going to hold real nice. There we go, guys. Marked what it is. Put the XD60 connector on. I didn't do a video on that because I've already done one, and I'll be uploading that soon on XD60 connectors. I'll just say... Since I've been using these, I don't plan on going back. They're cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helps.